coming up on Fresh View with Pastor Inkechi Ene. And Jesus says, I'm not sending you an angel. Mm -hmm. I'm not sending you the Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. I'm not sending you Gabriel. Mm -hmm. I'm sending you the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. The one who is God like, like me, me and, and with me. Another helper. Another helper. helper. Another of the, the same, same kind, kind. Alos Paracletos. Alos Paracletos Amen. Of the, the same, same kind as me. Amen. Glory be to Amen. God. Hello, I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene, and thank you for tuning in to watch Fresh Dew today. Fresh Dew has a growing circle of partners, and in this time, I want to invite you to be part of our circle of partnership. I'd like to read this portion of scripture. 1 Corinthians 3, from verse 6 to 9 says, I planted, Paul speaking, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are all God's, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, you are God's building. I love the scripture because it shows really for me the circle of partnership and it shows different roles it shows Paul planting Apollos watering but you know many times when we think about partnership we only think of the one who plants and the one who waters well there's a third person in that circle which I want to bring out today a third person and that's God since God brings the increase so think of the circle not just as two sets of people holding hands but there's a third set another person there God and every single one has the role they play. That's basically what Paul was saying. I have my role, you have my role, and God has his role. Now, if we read that from the New Living Translation, it shows this. It says, I planted the seed in your hearts. Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. And that's the beauty of partnership. We all work together with the same purpose of getting the word of God through fresh tea out to everyone. He says, and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers and you are God's field, you are God's building. So really between the one planting let's say us on Fresh Dew, and the ones watering, our partners, no one is more important. But the most important person is God. And that's the thing, we must never forget the God factor in any circle of partnership. And on Fresh Dew, we remember the God factor in our circle of partnership. So really, the question is, can increase occur, therefore, without the God factor? And the answer is no. No matter how hard you work, really, or how much you plant, or how much you water, you must remain conscious of the God factor. God is the one that brings the increase. Now, another question is, can God increase us without our playing our roles? Yes, he can, but he won't. Can God increase us without the circle of partnership? Yes, he can, because he's God, but he won't. Why do I say he won't? Because we're no longer a child of God. In the wilderness mode, in the mode where manna just drops and quail drops in our laps from heaven. No. You know, when the, when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan, the Bible says in Joshua 5.12 that the manna ceased. 5.12, I believe. The manna ended. That was it. Why did the manna cease? The manna that was dropping from heaven free of charge ended because when they crossed the Jordan, they plugged into Genesis 8.22. Seed time and harvest will never cease. And the Bible says, as they ate of the produce of their planting and their watering 
And of course, the God factor came in. God took away the manna. And there was no more free fall of provision from heaven. God can free fall provision. But he set up a cycle. And I like to put it this way. In the circle of partnership on Fresh Dew, we plug into the cycle. The circle plugs into the cycle. And the cycle is seed time and harvest. Where we plant, we come to the set, we teach the word of God, we shoot, and you water with your prayers, with your financial contributions, and we continue to push the gospel on fresh to you out to the ends of the earth. Now, how do I become a partner? It's very simple. Just log on to www.freshg.tv and follow the, the signs and log in and begin to you know, be part of what God is doing in the circle of partnership. You can put your partnership in any currency, you can put in any frequency you want to, but it's just for us to hold hands together, knowing that in that circle, the God factor is the most important and we can't do it without the God factor. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's my pleasure always to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Today on Fresh Dew, Pastor Shola Akinwale and myself will continue our wonderful message series, God, God is, is Big in, in me. me. You know, you can't preach a message, God is big in you. He doesn't give you a big, big message. Right. This is part 30. 30. Can you Amen. believe that? 30. We had no clue when we started. No. We probably thought it would be like 20 parts yeah. maximum. Uh, this is part 30 and we're just still kicking on. Mm. So what have we done so far? The word big means of considerable size or extent larger than other items of the same kind of considerable importance or seriousness generous. Sections 1, 2, and 3 are the ways we have, the way we have categorized this message. Section 1 looked at God is big, mm. and we can't even begin to go into that, you know, that review. Section 2 asked the question, who is the me? Mm. God is big in me. Who is the me? And we focused on the me, and we discovered that the me is the believer, right. the child of God, the one who is born again. Mm. Section 3, which is where we are now, began to ask the question, how then do you have this bigness of God expressed in this me? Mm. So that's what we've been looking at. And we looked at what we've called the 3G way yeah. or the 3G principle, principle for getting this bigness of God expressed in us. Because there's no point as a child of God to say, God is big in me, God is big in me. How then do you get the bigness of God expressed in you? How do you get that reality becoming your own tangibility? Amen. Glory be to God. Glory. And we said there were three main ways, the three Gs, um, grace, grace, gifts, gifts and glory. glory. We've pretty much finished with grace the summarized, mm -hmm. you know, um, sections we took on grace. Then we began to look at the gifts, and that's where we are now. And we found out that a gift is given to you without compensation mm -hmm. and without payment, you know? And we, we also found out that there's a link between grace and gifts. Gift, yeah. You know, giving is central to the grace of God. You mm -hmm. cannot talk about the grace of God without talking about giving. giving. And everything you've received from God, yeah. you received on the platter of his grace. grace. Then we looked at four important things about a gift. And mm. again, I won't go into that. We just finished that. Four wonderful things we found mm. out about a gift. Now let's get into beginning to examine now, you know, from today, some of these gifts that mm -hmm. God has given to us. We possibly cannot cover everything. Yeah. But you can imagine that there's some very exciting things we're going to find out. Mm. That God has actually lavished us with gifts, Amen. not just for his pleasure, mm -hmm. but also for our benefit. Amen. So that that bigness of God can actually be expressed. be expressed in our day-to-day -day lives. Day -day life. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so we'll now examine some of these gifts. The first gift we want to examine is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is also known as the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, there's no point in you talking about God being big in you without talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit or being filled with the Holy Spirit or what is also called as receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit for one simple reason, because the Holy Spirit is God. We've already said Christ in us mm. is a hope of glory, that Jesus came to, 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 so that he could come on the inside of us. We also mentioned, actually, that there were two comings. Mm. One was Jesus. When he finished, he came for the work of redemption. And after he left, then he sent the Holy Spirit, mm. you know. And the Holy Spirit today is God on the inside of the believer. And he's the one who brings God 
to the believer in, in fullness. We can actually say the Holy Spirit is God in the believer. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is Christ mm -hmm. in the believer. Mm -hmm. He's the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. He's the Spirit of the Father. Mm -hmm. He's the Spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. So, and one of the things the Holy Spirit is sent to do is actually to glorify. Mm -hmm. I want you to notice that word, glorify Christ in you as a child of God today. Look with us at John chapter 16, 13 to 14. John chapter 16, verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Can I pause here to mention that the Holy Spirit is not an it. Mm. The Holy Spirit is not a feeling. A the Holy Spirit is not, sorry? Breeze. It's not breeze. It's not wind. You know, it's very interesting that when Christians are having programs about the Holy Spirit, you either see some imitation or some attempt to show, a, to show wind, or you show, they'll show fire, or they'll show dove. a dove. And oil. Christ, oil. And Christians, unfortunately, have that picture that the Holy Spirit is an it. And till today, there are a lot of Christians who believe that the Holy Spirit is just an impersonal force or energy that moves you. Even the way Christians say, Holy Ghost, fire. Unfortunately, or preachers blow into microphone, microphones and say, the Holy Spirit will flow. Unfortunately, no matter how good is intended, if Christians are not properly taught, we get the impression that the Holy Spirit is something that moves us and the Holy Spirit is wind, his air. No, the Holy Spirit is a person. And so Jesus says, How be it, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it unto you. So notice that word glorify in verse 14. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit has come, and he has come, he's going to glorify him. The word glorify means to render or esteem, to or esteem glorious, to cost, look at this, to cost the dignity and worth of some person or thing to become manifest and acknowledged. Mm. This, mm. simply speaking, is talking about the bigness of That's God. That's what it's saying. Yes. Yes, That's so he said saying. to render apparent, That's what glorious, saying. dignity and worth of some person to become manifest. That's so the Holy Spirit is here to reveal and to yes. cause the bigness of God wow. to, be re to be revealed unto us. So part of the Holy Spirit's work on the earth today is to glorify Jesus. But look at this. He can't do it apart from the believer. That is why we are the temple of God. That is why our, our bodies are the members of Christ. The Holy Spirit really doesn't have any body on this earth other than the body of the believer. Mm -hmm. And the lovely thing about this is this. Pastor, he's in you. Amen. He's in me. Yep. He's on the, in the cameraman yeah. on the set here. He's in the millions and perhaps billions of people who have accepted Christ. Meaning that his impact, glory to God, on the earth. There is no telling of the, of the impact that the Holy Spirit can bring on this earth, provided every believer, first of all, acknowledges who he is, acknowledges that he is God, that he is God in the inside of them, and walk in the revelation that his person and his presence brings. If that happens, you talk about a revival, we'll have more than a revival. Oh, yeah. We'll redefine that word oh, yeah. because of what he's going to do in our lives and through us. So, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is God's gift. One of the gifts through which the Holy Spirit is magnified. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is God's gift to the believer. Notice this. And it is subsequent to the new birth. That means it comes after a person is born again. You know, you cannot be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You cannot receive the gift of the Holy Spirit except you are, first of all, born again. You see, with God, there are progress, there are orders, there are yes. orders, and you're steps. going to steps, and you're actually there are successions, and you're actually going to find this where, so to speak, in life, in the life, in the spirit, you're first of all born of the spirit, and then there are other steps and dimensions that God has made available to the child of God in the Holy Spirit. The water goes from your ankles to your knees to your, to your waist, waist yeah. to a point of overflow. overflow. Water you can swim in. Glory Amen. So in other words, one has to be born again first before they can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. One has to be, let's pray this way, one has to be born of the Spirit mm. before they before can be, they can be filled, filled 
with the spirit or can, before can, they can. can. You say that again? One has to be clear. good. One has to be, you have to be born of the spirit first before you can be filled with the spirit. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians mumble jumble this and it's all as a result of not rightly dividing the word of, of truth. So we can put it this way. We can confidently and categorically, mm. conclusively mm. say mm. that every Christian is born of the spirit Every but true born again Christian. Every true born again Christian. Mm -hmm. Every born again, true born again Christian is born of the Spirit, but not every born again Christian is filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Every born again believer is born of the Spirit. In other words, to be born again is synonymous mm -hmm. with being born of the Spirit. But not everyone who has been born of the Spirit is actually filled with the Spirit or has received the gift of the Spirit. They may have received the gift of salvation, but they may not have received the gift of the Spirit. Though it has been given. Though it's been given. The gift though has it's been there. Given. It's there. The since, gift has been given. Yeah. Willingly by the giver. Yeah. Just like we saw. Yeah. And he's, he's yearning to, he's made that available since Jesus Christ rose from the dead, seated at the right hand of the Father, what we call the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has been here. And there's no need for you as a child, we'll get to this, for you as a child of God to start tiring, mm. fasting. Fasting for a, a gift, gift that has, has been, been given. given. Come on. Mm. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> it's given already. And if you say born of the Amen. Spirit is different from filled with the Spirit, Good. it means that, you know, like you just said, not yeah. every every Christian is born of the Spirit, but not every Christian is filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. In the same way, every Christian is positioned to express the bigness of God, That's good. but not every Christian truly expresses the bigness of God. Right. Because it is when you are filled with the Spirit mm -hmm. that He comes in you and you, he's able to glorify Five. God. Yeah. And we just found out what glorifying God means. To make make his attributes yeah. apparent, Good. visible, Good. make that reality a tangibility. Tangi Praise God. That's why we have so many Christians mm -hmm. walking around without the bigness of our God yeah. expressed on their, on their inside. Their lives. Yes. Glory to God. That's a good word. Glory to God. Yeah. So to be born of the Spirit is to be born again. Let me just quickly read John chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered... And said to him, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. So you see in verse 3, Jesus mentioned born again. And then in verse 6, he said born of the spirit. One and the same thing. So we've said every Christian is born again, but not every Christian is filled with the spirit. And, and an analogy can be used to explain what it means to be born again or to be born of the spirit. And that is like, a, is the analogy of a well of water. Look at John chapter 4 verse 14. Jesus speaking to the woman at the well of Samaria said, But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Notice everlasting life. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that's the sinners, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Do you remember? Everlasting life. Jesus said, the water I will give will be a well. And what a well, what does a well do? A well supplies water, mm. but it supplies water primarily only for individual life. use, just to sustain life. That's why a well is at the back of a house or in a small community. Mm. But if you have a large community, if you have a large town, a large town cannot draw upon a well. Mm -hmm. They need to have something bigger than that. Glory be to Glory God. God. And that is what Jesus talked about in John 7. Yes. When he said in John 7, 37, he contrasted that. And he mm -hmm. says, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirst, let him come to me mm -hmm. and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow what? Rivers, Rivers. of living mm -hmm. water. But this he spoke, just in case you are not sure what he was mm -hmm. talking about, John mm -hmm. goes on to tell us, this he spoke concerning the spirit mm -hmm. whom those believing in him would, would receive. Mm -hmm. For the Holy Spirit was not yet it given because Jesus good. was not yet glorified. Lord. 
that answers it. Yeah. So Jesus is going to be glorified by the coming of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that would only be received by those who believe mm -hmm. in him. So we talked about being born of the Spirit, and this begins to take us into being filled, filled with, the with the Spirit. And that yeah. expression, filled with the Spirit, you know, you can, it can be used in, it can, there are many other expressions that describe it, being filled with the Spirit, being baptized with the Holy Spirit, receiving the gift, gift of the singular, of the Holy Spirit, because we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit mm -hmm. later. So receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, those are all one and the same. And having the Holy Spirit come, come upon, upon you. you having, yeah. they're, all, they're all the one and the same, same thing. Transaction. Okay, so, so Jesus says here, look, we can liken this to an, analog an analogy now of a river, and unlike a well, mm. what is the difference between a well and a river. Well, let's put it this way. A, a river, a well rather, just sustains life like we said, but a river produces power. Sure. You can actually have electrical power mm. <laughs> from a river. You can have force from yeah. a river. Yeah. You can have power coming out of a river. And it says, out of his belly hmm. shall flow rivers of living water. So by Glory turning wheels in the river, hmm. electricity is produced. Yep, and that's that. what we're going to... Hmm. We're talking about the bigness of God. Hmm. This is how you generate the power of God yeah. from within you. You need the person of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You need to receive the gift Gifts. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're going to find out again later... We need to take this, you know, systematically. That when you actually get filled with the Holy Spirit, the initial evidence is speaking in other tongues. Yep. And this is something, again, that people mm -hmm. have different opinions, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. concerns about, you know. But like we just heard, mm -hmm. it's a gift. Yeah. You don't tarry and worry about a gift. I'm giving... <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, tarry and worry. worry. <laughs> Most time, tarrying is just worrying. It's good. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Worrying that you're never going to receive mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. people tarry for years. and Yo, Years. Chronic I, seekers. I tarried and tarried. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit has already been, been given. given. So if you're giving me a gift, give me that pen of yours. <laughs> oh, Lord, mm. I'm here in your presence mm. to tarry for this pen. Right I there. tarry for this pen. Mm. Make me worthy to receive this pen. Baba. At what time, Baba, mm -hmm. are you here now to give me this pen? And you, you, the pen is right there. It's been given mm. already. Mm. He says, no, receive it. Amen. Receive it. Amen. It's just a gift. Glory be to God. Look at what he says in 39. Those believing in him mm, would receive. receive. Again, you see, born mm, of the spirit, spirit and to be filled with it's the spirit, good. to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Look at John 14, 17 and 16 and 17. And I really want to just show you this. He says, I will pray the father. And I love this. Mm. He will give you another helper that he may abide mm. with you forever. Yeah, so the Holy Spirit didn't come on the day of Pentecost and leave. That's good. I've sent him. So all this, send down your Holy Spirit. Send mm. your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Mm -hmm. He's here. That's good. He's here. It was a, like we said the other day, Jesus is not going to pay the kind of price he paid. Oh, Lord. And leave that deal mm. without a guarantee mm. that that mm. deal is taking itself to completion Amen. before he comes back to take us with him. Amen. So if he checked out as he, as he did, he says, look, I'm checking out, mm -hmm. but I'm sending somebody who is God like me. Amen. He didn't send a lesser person. No, no. The Holy Spirit is mm, God. God. That indeed is mm. the mystery of the Trinity. That's good. He is God. It is not God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in ranks. Mm. So God the Father is the number one God. Then God the Holy Spirit is the one that mm. is bronze. Uh. He's the, the Holy Spirit <laughs> is as much deity God. as God yeah, is. That's good. He's as much God as the Son of God mm, is. Good. And Jesus says, I'm not sending you an angel. Mm -hmm. I'm not sending you the Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. I'm not sending you Gabriel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sending you the Holy the Spirit. Spirit, the one who is God like, like me, me and, and with me. Another helper. Another, helper. another of the same, same kind. kind. Alos Paracletos. Alos Paracletos. Of the same, same kind as me. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. How will you play with that kind of gift? Hmm. How will you use religion to rob yourself hmm. of that kind of gift? Hmm. Why will you be drinking from a well when Glory. you can have rivers of water mm. generating mm. power? Mm. Look at John 14, 17. It says, it says, and he's referring to this another helper. He says, is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot. Mm. The world cannot yes. receive him mm. because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know, know him. him. Therefore, if he says, for you know him, mm. he's saying, therefore, because you know him, you can receive him. Good. The world cannot receive him mm -hmm. because they neither see him nor know him. This can't be talking just about salvation mm -hmm. because the world receives Christ. Yeah. 
So he's not talking about the world. The world has to receive Christ mm -hmm. for the for Christ to save them. Mm -hmm. The world receives Christ through the working and the conviction of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit yeah. But it says here the world cannot receive this Holy Spirit mm. as the gift I have sent him to be. The way I sent him on the day of Pentecost, Good. or the way I'm going to send him on Good. the way of Pen on the day of Pentecost, the world cannot receive mm -hmm. him. He says, but you know him, mm. for he dwells with you and mm -hmm. will be. In you. Look at the Living Bible translation. Mm. He is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit who leads into all truth. The world at large, yeah. I love that, mm -hmm. at large cannot receive him. For it isn't looking for him mm. and doesn't recognize him. Mm. But mm. you do. Mm. So you must be taught to know there is a Holy Spirit you need. Amen. It says you do, for he lives with you now and someday. Jesus still speaking, you yeah. know, before, before the cross. And someday he shall be in, in you. you. It says the world is at, the world at large. Yeah. You know, when you hear that expression at large, you say there's a criminal at, at large. large right? there's, it, it, there's somebody who is at, at large. large. Mm -hmm. He's at large immediately means he's running. Mm. He's running from the cops. He's mm -hmm. running from the police. He's running from, you know, judgment. He's running. Mm. He's running from the authorities. Mm. It says the world at large. Yeah, the world is running, running from God. Mm -hmm. Running from the mercy of Amen. God, running from the love of God. Mm -hmm. But glory be to God, God is there with his arms open wide. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you come to him, then you are now able mm -hmm. to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So if you are born of the Spirit, yes, you are going to heaven. Nobody is saying that if you're not filled with the Spirit, you will not make That's heaven. Not the issue. That's not the issue. We're talking about expressing the bigness of God here on earth. And that's why Pastor Shola said it's subsequent to the new birth. Mm -hmm. So you get born again. Mm -hmm. The very next most important thing you want to find out yeah. about is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You want to get empowered with that gift. You want to be able, you know, to, to have these rivers of mm. living water mm. generated within you. Mm. You want to have the power of God at your fingertips. Glory be to God. And that happens when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And sometimes this experience mm. of being born of the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit, like we said, one happens mm -hmm. first, the other one happens subsequent. Sometimes the time is almost split yep. second. There are people who are accepting Christ and they lift up their hands. Oh, Lord, come into my life. I receive you. Robo, shantala, basake. They begin to speak in other tongues. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, an <laughs> almost, almost, almost. <laughs> a simultaneous thing. But we find that the world cannot, cannot receive. Spirit. So you must be out of the world, the world. first. Mm. You must mm. be born of the Spirit, born again. Then you are ready to receive that another helper, another comforter who will help you. Express the bigness of God Thank you, in Lord. you. Thank you, Lord. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For this indescribable, lovely gift mm. and all the gifts you've been given to us. Thank you, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. You're teaching Hallelujah. us so much. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.